Hello everybody. It is Thursday again. Weeks are going pretty quickly now. Um, so it's time for another quick uh, free Portuguese lesson with me. So I want to hear in the chat box who we have listening, where you're tuning in from. You can tell me in English if you're a beginner or you can tell me in Portuguese if you want to uh, challenge yourself uh, if you're an intermediate learner. Um, so it's been well, it's been an exciting week because uh, I was able to kick off my Portuguese pro course. So if you are in that, if you're one of my pros, make sure you say hello to me in the in the chat box. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. We've been looking a lot at pronunciation. So I'm going to bring a couple of those little bits in today um, because. You know I bang on about it all the time, um, but pronunciation is one of the most important things to, um, yeah, to to getting your uh, Portuguese sounding really good. So, can you all hear and see me well? Because um, in my own feed, it's not coming up with my face. It's still saying starting soon, etc. So I'm wondering if I'm having some technical difficulties. Let me see. Give me a moment to see if I can work that out. <laughs> if you want to tell me in the chat box if it's working, that would be super helpful because, you know, I've only done this a couple of times, so I'm still trying to work it out as I go. <laughs> Let's see. Oh no, there you are. Okay, it just hadn't refreshed on my page. So let's see who we've got joining me today so I can say hello to you all. So, Paolo's here, Judy's here saying hello from Lagos. Carol's here, one of my pros, hey Carol. Stuart, uh, Mohammed, David, oh, oh awesome, got lots of you again today. Harry, uh, thanks for your email Harry, I got that this week. Um, <laughs> and Zoeda is, is here as well. Um, I don't know if that's your actual name or if that's just your YouTube name. Um, but this is a, a lovely Brazilian lady who's been commenting on a lot of my videos uh, and uh, yes, nice to see you again, everybody's saying it's perfect and working, beautiful. Okay, that's good to know. Alright, so let's have a look at what, well, how do I do this with my screen? I'm going to get there in the end, don't worry. <laughs> okay, so what are we going to look at today? So, uh, I mentioned pronunciation being one of the biggest barriers to being understood um, and to you understanding other people. So I'm just going to talk about one letter today and if you can perfect um, the difference in these two ways of saying the same letter, it's going to do wonders for your Portuguese. Okay, so um, we have got a screen flickering again, man. I wish I knew what to do about this. I've got um, I've got the Ethernet cable in, so my internet connection should be perfect. Is it to do with the rain? Is it to do with my software? I don't know. Um, but it looks like it's not going to work, is it? So I have another idea about what I can do if uh, this screen carries on flickering, which it seems like it's going to. Um, I got this trick from another YouTuber that I've um, been watching uh, who teaches English to uh, Brazilian people and he simply gets a whiteboard and writes on it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop worrying about all the technical uh, stuff and actually get into the lesson. So let's do that. So I'm just going to grab a pen. I'm going to put my board up here and it's going to sit by me and I'm going to just hold it up okay it's going to work it's going to be fine all right so let me position that there so you can see this right yes if I tilt it that way okay perfect so the letter I wanted to talk about today is the letter A okay so the letter A so we've got two ways of saying this like we were looking at with ease the other week we've got an open A and a closed A. And that is, again, remember with the E's, we talked about E, 
U and U, U, a closed E. And that closed E is really, really key to sounding really European Portuguese, which the Brazilians uh, on here will be able to, to tell you is true. They will say, call me, baby, onji, okay, with an E at the end. But in uh, European Portuguese, come, bebe, okay? So very similar with the A, and that's what I wanted to look at today. So if you look at the words, I've got three words here, falo, alto, fash, okay? This is the example of the open A, falo, alto, fash, ah, ah, okay? So this is the one that's easy to do, people get this one right, but what's the closed A that's going to make us sound much more Portuguese, okay? Let's see, I'm probably going to have to grab my rubber, aren't I? That's going to help. <sighs> So, how are we going to do the closed A? Okay, so if we look at the English word, away, away, uh, uh, okay, that's the closed A sound that we're going to be going for. So, if you look at these Portuguese words, Which way do I turn it? That way, to make it clearer. <laughs> okay, so the English word that we're going to use to copy the sound is away, uh, okay? And this is the one we want to apply here in Portuguese. So listen to this. Maria. Maria. Amigo. Amigo. Okay, so it's not amigo, amigo. That's a very open A, which sounds much more like Spanish, right? So again, it's these really subtle differences that are going to be the key to you speaking kind of Portuguese or having a bit of a, you know, foreign accent to really sounding Portuguese, okay? So, Maria, amigo, okay? How, have you had a go at that? How you, how's, it, how's it going? Are you sounding more Portuguese already? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay, so let me flip through my presentation so I can remember what else we were going to cover. Yes, exactly. So, with that in mind, you'll hear me say a lot that it's pronunciation that is going to make you understood because actually if you're pronouncing words incorrectly, you could be saying a different word entirely. Okay, so I want you to see, uh, want you to see the difference between these two words, okay? So, you can see this? The one uh, here, D, D, closed A. This one here, DA, DA, open A, okay? Now here we've got a nice clue. It's an uh, accent going upwards, so I know that it's Da, okay? I know it's an open A. So what's the difference between these words? Like I say, they mean completely different things, which is why it's important that we pronounce them correctly. Okay, so if I look at the word the, it's actually two words. Does anybody know? Can anyone tell me in the chat uh, which two words are smushed together here, if you know? I think maybe actually it's on a bit of a time delay, so maybe I'll uh, move on before you've answered. But uh, see if you can uh, get this one. So this is actually two words together, d and a. Uh. A uh is the definite article. Oh, what does that mean? Yeah, it's annoying when I get all jargon in language, isn't it? Um, or maybe it's not. Maybe you're a language geek like me and you like to know the proper words. Uh, let me know. So d is a preposition of, usually means of, a. Uh, the definite article meaning the. So this is when you say of the or from the. So you would say da, da. So for example, if you were saying I am from Italy, so da Italia. But we're not saying da, we're saying the. So the Italia. So the Italia. Okay, a closed A. Here we've got an open A. This is Da, and this comes from the verb dar, 
to give, okay? So he gives, she gives, it gives, is this one, da, the, means something different, okay? The same one, somebody saying that they, uh, <laughs> yes, the, uh, ah, people got that right in the chat box, well done. And uh, Guto says, I'm the first English person he understands when they speak. Yeah, I do speak very clear BBC English, I think. <laughs> so it's funny because I have had a lot of people contacting me saying that they watch these videos to help them with their English. So that's an unexpected side effect that I'm very happy with. You're very welcome uh, to join us. And especially if you're Brazilian, uh, it's really nice uh, to chat through uh, the differences that you're seeing between uh, European Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese. It's one of my uh, things that I'm obsessed with because I used to live in Brazil, but more on that another time. Okay, so let's look at another example. Two words, or oh, I'll learn how, which way I've got to turn it soon. <laughs> Two words. Um, so again, the A's sound different and the words mean different things. So here we've got, oh, this one is está, está. This one is esta, esta, está, esta. Okay, so you can see here we've got closed A, here we've got open A. So again, this one relates to a verb and this one relates to something completely different. Answers in the chat box if you already know what the difference between these two are. So, but I'm going to tell you now anyway. Here, <laughs> esta means this. This when you uh, have a feminine noun that you're describing. So, for example, esta caneta, this pen. Está means it is when we're speaking about something um, temporary. So I could say está a chover because it's raining right now. So again, super, super important to make sure that we're getting the distinction between these two right. So that's a nice um, side note about a big difference between European and Brazilian Portuguese because of course the Brazilians wouldn't say está a chover, they would say tá chovendo, tá chovendo, it's raining, okay? So that's a, one of the very obvious differences between the two. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to play with is some expressions um, so that we can practice our pronunciation through expressions okay so idiomatic expressions they're always a really fun thing to play with with language I've actually got a video um, coming out soon um, on easy Portuguese uh, easy languages if you search for easy languages and you haven't seen my videos over there yet it's a different channel I, I work with and make videos entirely in Portuguese okay so if you want a bit more of a challenge on my own channel I teach in English um, and then on over on easy languages it's all dialogue um, and interviews uh, in uh, Portuguese so there's one on uh, idiomatic expressions coming up and so I wanted to look at a couple of those today and um, so we can practice our pronunciation and also learn what it is that they mean. So I'll see if I can write it here nice and neatly for you to see the first one. Oops. Okay, I hope I wrote that correctly, because I did that from memory, <laughs> so let me just check it on the thing. Have I read it right? Uh, 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 uh. Yes, I wrote it right. Okay, so <laughs> let me show this to you then and see what it says uh, without the light. Okay, so I'm going to read this to you, and uh, you can practice your pronunciation with me. Okay, so I'll leave a pause so that you can repeat. A galinha. The vizinha é sempre melhor que a minha. Okay, so we're practicing there this NH sound. When they go together, it makes a NH sound. NH. 
okay? And we've got lots of A's here, so this Ergolinia, closed A's, okay? So red pasta is Ergolinia de Vizinha, es simple mejor que a minha. So what does this mean? Any guesses, or I guess our Brazilians in the audience will already know what this means. Um, this is a funny one. It literally means galinha is hen. Okay, so hen or chicken. Vizinha is your neighbour. Okay, so because it ends in an A, this is a female neighbour. If it was, you had a neighbour that was male, it would be vizinho. E, it is sempre, always. Melhor. Now we've got another tricky sound in here. Lhe. Lhe. Melhor. Melhor. Okay. Melhor means better. Que a minha. And again another nha. Than mine. So literally it means my neighbour's hen is always better than mine. Which doesn't really rhyme in English, doesn't really sound like much. Um, but what it literally means is when you're jealous of somebody and um, they always seem to have better stuff than you, right? I sort of think of it a little bit like the grass is green on the other side, like you always want what your neighbour has. Um, and I just think this is a really funny one. Um, and for some reason, the Portuguese have tons of expressions um, around the topic of chickens, okay? I'm not sure why, but I'll give you another one right now. So let's see. Uh. Another expression about chickens. Let me just check uh, how this one is. This one, okay. Okay. <laughs> so here's another one saying about chickens. This one says... Muitos, oh that's not very clear, that does that looks like an A and it's not. Okay. Muitos anos a virar frangos. Muitos anos a virar frangos. Okay. So this literally means many years. So listen to the pronunciation here of muitos anos. So those O's that come at the end of the word are an U. Muitos anos, and that's a closed A in anos, okay? Muitos anos, a virar frangos. So this literally means many years turning chickens. So I guess this comes from, you know, if you go to a rotisserie and like they have a thing like turning chickens uh, so that they get cooked all the way through. Um, I guess that that's what this is referring to and that's a kind of boring repetitive job. But this phrase is used to mean um, if you've already got a lot of experience doing something, okay? Um, I've got a lot of experience doing that. I like to think of this as slightly equivalent to, like, it's not my first rodeo, maybe, in English. Um, when you say, like, oh, I know what I'm doing. It's not my first rodeo, okay? So that is that one. So... Uh, idiomatic expressions like this are always really good fun um, and yeah I recommend um, learning a few of those A for a laugh and B um, for practicing your pronunciation right um, and there is actually a page on Instagram that I really like it's called Portuguese Dictionary and it's basically every day they post a new one of these um, so there we go, free publicity for them, I don't know them at all, but um, they'd be cool uh, to, to hang out with. <laughs> so I would definitely recommend checking them out on Instagram. And also on Instagram, a good tip is if you're looking for kind of bite-sized ways to learn Portuguese, that if you just go onto Instagram and search the hashtag learn Portuguese, there's tons and tons of stuff on there, particularly Brazilian teachers are doing a great job of um, producing like really fun uh, bite-sized content. Uh, for people, so I would definitely re recommend uh, checking that out. Okay, so you didn't get, get to see my uh, beautiful pictures I'd put on here of chickens, but you know, never mind. <laughs> All right, the next thing I wanted to look at was um, being polite. Okay, so 
I made a video on this, if you haven't checked it out yet, on, on my channel, How To Be Polite, and uh, people really liked this because they say that this is something they have struggled with a lot um, here in Portugal. And so it is a tricky one to get right, so if you haven't seen that, then go check that out. But basically, I talked about the three main ways you can be um, polite in Portuguese. The first one is, well, for all of them, you need to speak in the third person, okay? So when you're talking to one person, you will speak in the third person. So, for example, we know that to conjugate a verb like falar, it would be il falo. Tu falas, el, el, fala. So when we're being polite, that's the one we want to use. However, what we learned in that video was that in Portugal, <laughs> we don't use the word você. Okay, so another really big difference between European Portuguese and, um, and Brazilian Portuguese. This is the easiest way to be polite in Portugal. You just miss off the você and you say the... Um, verb. So, for example, if you want to ask somebody if they speak English, you would just say fala English. You don't need the vossi. The other ones we learned were using the person's name. So, for example, a Maria fala English. Or using o senhor a senhora. So, for example, o senhor fala English. So, I wanted to show you a couple more ways that I didn't fit into the video that you can use to be polite. And you might have seen these and wondered how to use them. So, for example, I can say... Tudo bem consigo. Consigo, okay? So you might have heard to say with me, you would say... Comigo. To say with you, you would say contigo. Okay, but this contigo is the one that's informal. So how would we say it if we were looking to be formal? It's this one. Consigo. Tudo bem consigo. So if you were out in the street and you bump into your, oh, those are the days, weren't they? Um, and you bump into your elderly neighbour, for example, maybe his name is Senhor Antonio, uh, you could say, Olá, well, Senhor Antonio, tudo bem consigo? Yeah? So this one is how you can use, is another way of being polite. Another one, you might have seen this in billboards all over Portugal at the moment, if, you, if you're if you here. Um, and that's an, this is another way of how to be polite. So it goes like this. Okay, can you see that? So this says, cuida de si, cuida de todos. Okay, and this si means you. Okay, politely. So the word here is me, which would be min, min. Then you have ti, ti meaning you, informal, and then the formal or polite version of this is C, si. cuida de si, so look after you. So this is something that would come after um, a preposition. We don't need to worry about that, it's just if you know that you, you might want to say T or if you were talking about yourself, me, and you're looking for the you polite equivalent of that, it is C, C. Okay. So I can't believe how quickly the time's gone. It's like already, already half an hour's gone. I know it's like a couple of minutes late because I had the technical difficulties, so we'll carry on a little bit longer. Um, and I will just say, how would you say muito challenge of you, Dad? Frangles is like this is not my first rodeo, all in Portuguese. In other words, how do you compare two things using Portuguese? This is like okay. So the way I would. Um, advise you to do that Emmerich, which is a very good question that you just gave me in the chat box. So you're saying, how would I say, it's sort of like this, okay? So this was in one of my slang videos, and uh, <laughs> it's very, very common, you'll hear it all the time, you can say tipo, which means like, or sort of like. É tipo, and that's literally all you need to say. É tipo, it's like, 
such and such, yeah? So, uh, então, muitos anos de virar franco. É tipo dizer, it's like saying, é tipo dizer, um, not my first word, yeah, in English. Don't quote me on that, that's just my interpretation of the, uh, of the, of the expression itself. Maybe one of the uh, Portuguese or Brazilian could comment below to see if that is correct. Alright, so, because I did start a little bit late, I will just carry on a little bit longer. <laughs> so, uh, carrying on with the idea of being polite, okay? Because this is something else that trips people up and people ask questions about a lot. And again, I'm using um, examples that we're using a lot at the moment. So, what is the difference between... These two phrases here. So you can see I've got fique em casa and fica em casa. Okay? Here is the ending is different, but we know we're using the verb ficar to stay. So this phrase is stay at home. Stay at home. So which one is polite and which one is, well, which one's formal and which one's informal? Does anybody know? Tell me in the chat box. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Well, not minutes, but seconds. Does anyone know? I'm going to tell you. So, <laughs> this one is the polite one. Okay? So, this is what we would call a polite command or request. So, this is the imperative tense. They're both the imperative tense, but one is informal and one is formal. So, this is the one that is polite and, and formal. And the way we formulate that is we have to swap the ending, okay? So, fica is, fica is an AR verb. So, if I've got the normal conjugation in the present tense with an A at the end for an AR verb, that is the one that is informal. If I say fica and give it an ER ending, if I give it an E ending, then it becomes polite because we're putting it into a tense called the subjunctive, okay? Which is one of the things that people hate most about language learning, the subjunctive, but it is used a lot, especially in Portuguese, so we need to get on board with it, okay? <laughs> so I'll give you some more examples. So, yes, exactly. Two, Stuart and Carol got that right, that the first one is the formal one. So let me give you a couple more examples. Fala, fala, okay? So these are from the verb falar. So now, if we apply the same logic, we know that this one is it's an AR verb and it's got an A on the end, so that's gonna be my, um, that's gonna be my uh, informal one. This one, this E looks weird because we know it's an AR verb, so it doesn't usually end in an E. But when it does end in an E, we know that we're putting it into the subjunctive tense and therefore this is a polite request, okay? Same with, one more, you might have seen these, uh, you might have seen these adverts around town. Beba com moderação. Beba com moderação, okay? So, we know that beber is an ER verb, to drink. Beber is an ER verb. So, when I see an A at the end and not an E, I know that we're in the subjunctive tense. And then speaking in the subjunctive tense is how we make polite requests, okay? So, if I could say bebe to, uh, with an E on the end to a friend, but if I'm being polite, I would say... Beba. Beba. Okay. Hope that makes sense because that is a tricky one. But I basically wanted to expand a little bit on what I covered in the video um, and talk you through a few extra points about how we can be polite. Okay, I'm gonna do a better job at sticking at my sticking to my time today. So it's already six o'clock, so that means my very quick fire um, free lesson is already over. Um, but keep telling me in the um, comments what else you need to learn. 
what else you would like me to cover in these lessons uh, and I will do my best to cover those things. So let me see what you've already said. Yeah, drink responsibly, that's exactly what it means. And somebody has said um, imperative question mark. Yes, exactly. So this is the imperative. And the way that we formulate the imperative when you're being polite is to use the same formation as the subjunctive. Okay, so that is how that works. Um, how does this rule apply to IR and ER verbs? Partir and beber. So yeah, hopefully I just covered that. Um, beber, for example. The, the clue is to give it the opposite ending. That's the way I think of it anyway. I hope that that's helpful. So if I know I've got an AR verb, I have to give it, uh, it has to be uh, an E. If I know that it's an ER verb, then it's going to be an A. So the subjunctive is one of the tr trickiest things. Um, but if you start to think of it that way, hopefully when you see it, you'll be like, oh, okay. But then of course we have irregulars, don't we? Um, so the, uh, for, let me give you a, an irregular, just to, so we have the verb fazer. So the straightforward third person in the present tense would be fash, right? And we, so that would be like do. So we know this because we have fash favor, which literally means do the favor, right? If we're thinking about it. Um, the irregular of that, you may hear this when people are being uber polite in a restaurant or something. The uh, subjunctive for um, fazer is fasa. Fasa. So this would be fasa u favor. So somebody might say fas fas or favor instead of fas favor because they're being super duper polite. Okay, so that's enough. I've given you lots of information to think about. I don't want to overload you. Um, but as always, it was beautiful to to see you, to have so many of you again. They're all saying thank you very much. Could you do a bit on the subjunctive in a lesson in the future? Oh, okay. I don't want to scare too many people off because it is, it is an annoying one. But yeah, we can start to have a look at the subjunctive and when we might use it. Um, because yeah, in Portuguese it is definitely used a lot. Alright then, so lovely to see you all. Thank you for bearing with me. Was was the was this okay with the whiteboard? Was it okay doing like that? If so, I will try and buy a smaller one so I can hold it up a bit a bit more easily. Um, but other than that, I look forward to seeing you all soon. Oh, and last last request. These uh, lessons are totally free. So the only way that I would love you to repay me would be to, to subscribe to my channel. <laughs> Because um, the more people who like and subscribe my uh, like my like my videos and subscribe to the channel, the more easy it is for other people to find me. And uh, yeah, it's it's really hard when you're just starting out. So six weeks ago, I only had 176 subscribers, and now I'm nearly at 600, which is incredible. So um, I was actually looking at my like analytics, and it actually told me that half the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. So, if you want to do me a little favor, <laughs> then subscribe to the channel if you like my videos, and send this to a friend who you think would find um, find it useful. All right, that's enough from me. Uh, I'm sorry that about the rain. I can't tell you to go out and have a lovely evening, but have a lovely, cosy evening at home, uh, and I will see you again same time next week. Ciao for now.